dismissive both of feeling and of hope she expresses the futility of life she expresses the from those dark pools of doubt of personal validity for I who listens to this half-told tale a moment comes my core of strength may falter my patience and compassion strike the limit you do you'll go on getting what you've got I used to spend time lying on my stomach because we had a big garden and did gardening. We really worked like hell. And I would sometimes lie on a piece of looking at about like that and say, now, I'm going to look at every single tiny thing, a struggling ant or 
a tiny blade of grass just emerging. And look at it in, you know, as with a, a magnifying glass. And got great pleasure in the minutiae and thinking, there's miles and miles and miles of these teeny, weeny, weeny things happening. Uh, translating it always from, you know, the bigger vision to the smaller. I thought to them, this is terribly reasonable. It's wonderfully arranged. There was somebody looking after things. It wasn't all, you know, things were organized by God, somebody, and you hadn't any communication with them, but you could observe what they did, which was highly sensible. It gave you a feeling that somebody, in some kind of way, was looking after things. What I liked, they looked at the detail. We had a stream which ran through, our, the, through the orchard, and because it's a very clay soil, there would be wonderful, pure gray clay, almost with no stones or anything in it. And we used to make endless things because our play was entirely created from natural objects. You know, we had scissors and paper, paste, but all our play material we made from our natural surroundings. It wasn't really so much the, it was the result, it was the doing. And endless dams and grottos and all decorated with, uh, where you could sometimes find those pearly, shiny stones. So that it was really using natural materials in this kind of, uh, uh, you yeah, creative play because they were they were what they were nobody fussed because we had a saw and chisel and nobody got hurt I don't remember anybody ever hurting themselves pen knives oh yes I mean everything like that and making furniture out of acorns acorn cups and so on so that I had the advantage which I imagine very few children have now of being thrown on our own resources and really left alone by the adults. The stimulus to the whole body in terms of the excitement of making contact, choosing, handling, sucking, mouthing, banging, these objects, not only was the sensory experience which came directly through the hands and the eyes, but also the whole of the body toes and feet are in active movement because of the non-differentiation of uh, neurological non-differentiation, which is characteristic of that age. We do not have, we formulate it, we live it in a different way, but a total respect for their experience, both heights and depths and that somehow this keeping in touch with um, the, the, the incredibleness of a, of a of wonder, if you like to call it that. Well, you see, we used to play everywhere in the house and there was a very special table that you put the table top in a certain way and then you could get in under night. And so that became the cave or whatever it was. And we did endless dressing up and plays. We wrote our own plays. Well, I was interested in spatial relations and to drawing and to positioning of where a chair was, where a vase was, um, yes, and the changing uh, emphasis of light and shade as the, as the evening drew on. And of course, having this uh, 
large garden and a field and an orchard, you could get right away. The adults hadn't a clue. I mean, I sometimes look back. Well, you couldn't do it now, but you did then. What was so clearly in my mind was the uh, work I did in the state institution in Trieste, where children had neither personal, individual personal relationships, they were cared for indiscriminately, nor did they have um, play material of any kind. And they, uh, when uh, in close proximity with each other in a playpen, in the material which I have filmed, which is really archive material, um, had no relationship with each other. They didn't look at each other, uh, they didn't smile, they didn't smile at anybody anyway. They had no pre preverbal noises and they had uh, no, no contact. What became so evident was the significance of children's gestures, facial expression, and their handling of objects and that when children had objects such as the ones in the treasure basket, when they were either um, in good relation to a close adult or they were seated next to other children, the object became the, the means of communication. Uh, to live, we're in a body. Some people feel that you go and live somewhere else. Your spirit, undoubtedly what we call our spirit, the person, the person we remember when they're not, when they're away on a holiday or something and we think about what they li look like, or if they're away for longer, you have a photograph, and explain that we, we find ways of sustaining these relationships as best we can. And a lot of it is tied up with the fact that we really don't know. And I would say we would like to know. We would like to believe, but you know, there's part of us which makes a question. So I would describe very exactly the sort of processes of dealing with loss. To describe, I think, uh, as an adult, how I manage to absorb this, to deal with it, to think about it, to feel about it, and in the process of think about my own death, I would, I would bring that in, not in any morbid way, but to try to give a sense of the movement of life, of death, of humanity, and sort of to say, you know, one of the ways that we manage, and I would not use a term which I hate, come to terms. Come to terms always seems to be used. You accept the downward part. I would never use it. Oh, well, now you have to come to terms. Bloody hell, do I? Don't intend to. If you're going to have the good, you've got to have the bad too. That is uh, inescapable. If you have, if you're going to have any heights, you don't have heights without valleys. If you want to live on Salisbury Plain, okay, that's what you'll get. You will have no perspective. It'll go on and on and on. <laughs> we do not have, we formulate it, we live it in a different way, but a uh, total respect for their experience, both heights and depths, and that somehow this keeping in touch with the wonder, if you like to call it that. Mm -hmm.